folks, this is Darren with Mario Works. I'm dodging a yard sprinkler there. <laughs> it's going to be coming my way just in a minute. But So what I'm here is I'm working on this um, Schwintex slide room. We're in Squim, Washington today. And, um, and yeah, it's working its way back here. So um, Now, let me kind of bring you up to speed on what's going on with this thing. And I think what I'm going to do is move out of the way, let this thing do its pass, and then we'll come back. Okay, I'll have a talking point right here. And I'm doing um, freehand on the phone right now. So um, was not planning on doing a video, but anyway. So customer states that their Schwintech slide room is out by just a little bit on the bottom. One side of the Schwintech is nice and abutted closed. So what we're looking for is a 50% compression on the D seal. And we're seeing that on the, the aft side. The forward side, what we're seeing is the top of the slide room. When this slide room is closed, the top of it's touching the sidewall, but the bottom is out about an inch. And then when the slide room goes out, then the bottom is touching, but the top is out by about an inch. So basically the, the, the forward side of the slide room, the side we're working on where the sprinklers run in, is kind of skewed. Okay, kind of like going in and out like this. Okay, so when I bring you back over there, what we're going to do is I'll show you that drive shaft and the uh, gear packs. Now I've already taken this thing apart, so I am just telling you what uh, is happening. So if you have a Schwintech slide room and it's not totally going in parallel with respect to the side wall of the RV, um, that's what this video is going to be all about. I'm going to kind of walk you through why that would be caused and how to fix it. So I'm going to be brave. I'm going to go around there, and like I said, if the camera's shaking around i'm sorry i don't have any of my tripods or lavaliers or anything so we're just going with the phone on this uh, on this day here so i'm going to bring you around and we're going to see what the problem is all right so let's just go with this uh i might need to run for cover here in a second so anyway um so when this slide room is in we've got the h column now i do have the h column right down here on the ground okay so let's just talk about that for a second and um, so on the H column, you'll see these, and let me do it this way. Uh, it's not gonna wanna cooperate. So these screw holes, okay? So that is what's holding your, um, your system to the wall, the outside wall of your RV. If you, I don't know, yep, if you pull this back, let's see, where's the hole? Right here is the hole the motor fits in. So I will reference another video. Hold on, let me move. The sprayer's coming around here. Here it comes. <laughs> so I will reference another video um, where, uh, here, enjoy the view while I'm doing my talking point. I'll reference another video where I go through all the components of a Schwintech, and um, we'll just go with that. So let's just jump ahead and get to the problem. And I think we're clear for the next few minutes here. I've been fighting this thing. <laughs> Hopefully it'll turn off soon. Focus. There we go. So once you get all that other video watched and you understand how things work, what we've got here is a gear pack. So here's a drive shaft. I'm gonna pan you up, pan you up, pan you up, pan you up. So you have a rack at the top, the motor sits on top of that bearing block and the motor rotates, turning that bearing block, turning this drive shaft, turning this bearing block and everything's parallel, everybody's happy. How does this room get one inch out of square? Well, what I want you to do is where I've got this taken apart, watch how much play is in that um, bearing block. There should not be that play in there, okay? So when you have this kind of play, that means that the bearing block is not abutted to this rack. It's moved itself away. Uh, I'm gonna rotate the camera. It might go weird on you, but I just wanna get the camera angle in there for you. See all this play that you have in there, okay? So if you've got play, you're going to probably have skipping teeth. Here's the teeth on the spur gear in there. So how do you fix that? So, so that's what I'm saying. I'm eyeballing this thing. It's coming back to me. Um, so if you have a, a, a slide room that's not closing properly, it's going to be because that spur gear skipped a tooth on this rack. Okay. And the reason it would do that is because you have looseness here. Uh, I've got another 30 seconds. So in order to get this bearing block off, we need to take all these screws. Now this one, I've just got a little loose. Okay. Take all the screws out. I've put one back in to hold it. All right, the new battery way. Here it comes incoming. So you have to take out the, uh, let's move a little bit more. You have to take out the, um, the screws in order to get that bearing block off the end. So it slides off the end. All right. Okay, it's going back. 
it's a little little entertainment for the day so I've taken my screw out this is now loose and then we can take this right off the end okay we'll take that right off the end that's how you get these off now let me go to my service trailer where we can do some show and tell and let the sprinkler run its uh, course okay so we've uh, run for cover with our service trailer here's the bearing block uh, the spur gear is there okay but we don't need to know about that what I want you to look at is this plastic shoe okay see how it's just very loose let's use one finger here I can pull that off very easily okay and so if I were to pull off the shoe and we look closely you'll see some wear marks right on that I'm calling that a fin okay um, now Lippert will call this the inverted and the standard I believe and I think it has to do with the profile here so I got a I'm gonna call this Darren's term is the fin and it's gonna go up but they have fins that go down I'm gonna show you that in a minute I'm gonna do a show and tell of about five different bearing blocks that they've changed recently I've got them here next to me because I'm on my service trailer so this is the the plastic shoe and you can see that the ends broken off on it okay there's also supposed to be some little clips right in there that snap on and those are all worn loose and um, so the this little plastic shoe broke and that is what's causing all of the play. Well, Darren, how did the plastic shoe break? So I was able to just snap that on very easily and easily pull it back off. There's absolutely nothing keeping that shoe. I'm calling this plastic thing the shoe. There's nothing keeping that shoe on that bearing block. Absolutely nothing. I can easily pull it right off. When these are new and they go on, they snap on and it's on, okay? So Darren, Darren, hey Darren, Darren, how did this break? And now this is where I'm gonna totally deviate from what the Lippert manufacturer is telling you. My position, and I've literally worked on hundreds and hundreds, maybe even thousands of these Schwintech systems out here in the field. Overwhelmingly, the bell curve of damage that's done to these systems is because it's not lubricated. It's dry, this is a mechanical component. I don't care how it's manufactured. This piece slides back and forth in that rack. This is a piece of hardened plastic. I don't, you know, I don't know the, well, it's, a, I don't know what letters of the alphabet associate itself with this. It's a hard plastic, okay? So maybe ABS, I don't know. I don't care, really. And if you know, wonderful, good for you. It doesn't matter, but if we were to look at these, and I have several other shoes here, you will begin to see some wear marks on the plastic why is there wear marks on the plastic because it's sliding in and out of that aluminum okay if it's not lubricated you're going to get some wear marks on it it's a mechanical component i don't know why you would not lubricate that so because this thing's working so hard it's a hot summer day it's cooking itself the aluminum's getting really really hot you have the 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 what is it the coefficient of expansion and contraction between the plastic and the aluminum and this thing's really working really hard and then we have some brittleness we have some breakage Okay, now I do have a new shoe here, and if we were to look at the new shoe compared to the old shoe, you'll see that some of the pieces are missing off the end. Um, so, what I say with love on a lot of my videos when we're talking about the Schwinn Tech, you are big boys and girls, you have your own RV, you make your own decisions. Don't listen to me, don't listen to Lippert, you do your own decision. If you choose to not lubricate your slide room, your Schwintex slide room, if you choose to listen to what Lippert's telling you and a lot of the dealerships and a lot of the shops, if you choose, your choice, you choose to listen to them and not lubricate your Schwintech, then what I want you to do is do me a favor. Hang on to my phone number and when, I did say when, your Schwintech starts giving you grief, get your butt up here, schedule an appointment with us. I'll be more than happy to do it. I could use the extra 500 bucks to fix this for you. Okay? I mean that with love. But uh, as overwhelmingly, the repairs that I've made on these Schwintex, and some of these are gruesome, awesome, ugly damages, okay? If they just would have lubricated it, no problems would have been had. Now, what kind of lubricant are we going to use? We're going to use this uh, CRC Power Lube with PTFE, which is Teflon, okay? Yes, we're going to put Teflon on our slide room, okay? There's a lot of people out there that are upset that we're using Teflon on these slide rooms, but you make your own choice. All I am saying is... The reason this is Darren's position, the reason this broke is because this room was not lubricated. And that's making it work a lot harder. Okay? Properly lubricated Schwintech. 
I'll be honest, I think Schwintech, I work on all the different slide rooms, and I would be honest, I think Schwintech is one of my favorites. Oh, but Darren, there's all the Varun ones out there, and there's all these other things, and it's crap, and it's this, the other. Great, wonderful. With all my experience of working with all the different slide rooms, I would say that the Lippert Schwintech slide room is my absolute favorite. Not because I make a lot of money making the repairs, but when it is working correctly, when it's all properly dialed in, when you've lubricated the rollers underneath, and you've got support underneath, and the weight of the room is on the rollers, that uh, this slide room will last you a long, long, long time. It's also very easy to work on. It's very easy to troubleshoot. It's very easy to recover from, and it even diagnoses itself with the control module. So they've done a fantastic job on the system. My position, lubricate it. Lubricate it with Teflon. Okay, done with that. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this new shoe and I'm going to snap it on there, and I want you to see if the camera is going to listen. Now, with this one, I can put it on and I could just easily... Um, with one hand even, I can easily just put it on there easy peasy and I can take it right off, no problem. And that is where our play was. Here's a brand new shoe. I've got a, I might need to use both hands on this and there, okay, I've got it started. Let's see if I can snap it on there. There we go, it snapped on. That thing's not coming off. I, uh, I, I cannot get that shoe off of this um, bearing block, okay? It's, it's just, I would have to take some some screwdrivers and something to get that shoe off. Now, remember just a few moments ago, I had this bearing block on the rack and I was sliding it back and forth and it was a lot of wiggling, okay? I'm gonna go be brave. I'm gonna go face that uh, water spray or everything and I wanna see what difference putting that little plastic shoe on made. We're gonna leave the broken one here. We're gonna put that one on. And then when we come back, I'm gonna do some show and tell. So let's go back over to there and just see what a shoe will do. Okay, so he's facing away from me this time. So we're gonna take this, we're gonna put it on the end. There we go. Okay, and let's see here. I'm gonna switch hands. Is there any play? There's hardly any play at all, hardly any. And that's the purpose of that shoe. It's gonna hold this bearing block with that plastic profile. It's gonna hold that bearing block tight into the groove, this groove right here. That's, so in other videos that I've shared, shared I said the most important place to lubricate is this track right here. You don't need to put any spray on the teeth. You need to put it in this track, okay? And then I've got about 10 seconds before I got to moving in. I want you to reach inside your flapper seal, find this drive shaft and squirt some right on the top of this so it wicks itself down. And then one more place. Okay, I gotta go. Yay, let me grab my uh, bearing block. Here we come and coming. <laughs> All right, let's run back to the service trailer. I was talking about the lubrication. So I'm gonna want, I have seen, and I might even have some in my box here. Inside this hole right in here is where that drive shaft turns. So what I'm gonna want you to do is, is get your straw here and pull back your flapper, your, your, your flap on your wiper seal. And I want you to reach in, I want you to find that drive shaft. And then with one finger, hold this um, straw up to that drive shaft and squirt it. And what that's going to do is that's going to wick itself down inside of this hole. Um, and then it'll even wick itself down into all these other holes. And then the other place that you could lubricate is on your H column, you'll find a rivet and it, it's a thing called a gib. Uh, since we're doing this, let me just show you that real quick. Let me just pause and go show you that. Hold on. Okay, so here, here I have the, the H column. This is the bottom bearing block. It, it does not have the motor holes on it. And so these little things in here are called Gibbs, G-I-B, Gib. Now these are steel, Lippert's change them to plastic. Um, but we're gonna slide that bearing block onto that, if it'll allow me. I've got about 10 seconds again. Uh, there's a little plastic, there we go. And so what I do is, okay, I felt the top, I felt the drive shaft, I've let it wick down. You're gonna see a rivet right there on your wiper seal okay so that's where the wheel is and then i squirt a little bit right on top of this roller and it'll wick itself down and get inside of these little all right here comes the water and it's going to get down inside of these things and keep that ah it's getting drenched um it'll get down on these slots now what the, what the gib does is it allows this bearing block to move you know back and forth laterally if the room, not a lot, if the room needs to move. Now this hole here, and that's what I was fighting a minute ago. Let's go back. Uh, yeah, there's a little bit of leftover plastic rivet right there. And uh, maybe on this side too. Sometimes they'll put aluminum rivets on one side and plastic rivets on the other. So if you're popping your bearing blocks off, 
you're overcoming that little plastic or aluminum rivet. One side usually has a plastic, the other side usually has a aluminum. It's okay if they break. Um, and so if you look on the side profile, here, let's go this way. It'll allow this bearing block to move just a little bit as your room's going in and out, okay? So, Darren's a big advocate of lubricating. They're telling you not to. Look at all the rust on there. A lot of your noise coming from your Schwintex is because this rust, this is a piece of steel, is rubbing against this piece of aluminum and it makes a terrible, terrible squeaking sound. So get your straw right on top of this roller wheel and then and squirt, you know, a little bit. And if you just study this bearing block, it'll wick itself down into these gib slots on your bearing block. Okay? So you can do all of it from the outside. So when, you're, when your bearing block is in, Here's your straw. You're going to hit right on top of the roller. It's going to wick itself down on both sides of the roller into the gib. And then you're going to reach back. You're going to feel the top of your drive shaft. You're going to squirt some of the drive shaft. Let it work its way all the way down to the bottom. And then the um, this is the only other part I want you to lubricate is right in that track right there where the shoe rides. Okay, now let me go do your show and tell on another element of this video. So I do have quite a few bearing blocks that I'm going to do a show and tell on. Now. There are quite a few differences between these things. So one size does not fit all. The first thing I want to point out is the thing I was talking about, the fin. Notice how on the top, now this one's a top bearing block because a motor mounts on it. This is the bottom bearing block. He's shorter. He doesn't have this extra piece where the collet goes and he does not have these one, two, three, four holes where the motor fits in. Okay, none of that. So the first thing I want you to look at is the fin. This fin comes out and he points up, but they also have one where he comes out and he points down. So be advised, you have the fin, now, therefore, your shoe is not compatible. Your shoe is going to either snap on and attach to the bottom hook here or snap on and attach to the top hook. So that's one of the things I want you to notice. But there's more. For the next part of our show and tell, I want to talk about the gibs. Remember, we just talked about those, the GIB gib that the thing slides in. So here, they have two types. They have a plastic poly type of a gib and they have a steel gib. Okay, so they've come out with the type that the, it slides in on plastic. Okay. But when they did that, it does not fit into these, okay? So we have to have the steel gib, which fits into that. But if you take the steel gib and apply it to here, there's too much play, okay? So we've talked about the direction of the fin points and now the diameter of the gib slots. So that's another difference that they have made on these bearing blocks, but there's more. Okay, on this comparison, I want to talk about the thicknesses of the actual bearing block. Okay, so if I were to butt these two together, I'm doing this with one hand. Okay, so I'm even at the bottom, you can see the overhang right here. So they're not the same thickness. This one's obviously thinner than that one. But wait, there's more. Because if I were to compare it to this one here, here, I'll just make the same the same. Okay, so I'm, I'm even at the bottom. There's not as much of an overhang, but there's still an overhang, okay? As opposed to this one, a lot of overhang, okay? So then if I were to compare this one to this one, you'll see there's a little bit of overhang there. So we talked about the orientation of the fins. We talked about um, uh, the, the gib changes, and now they're changing the diameter of the bearing blocks. But wait, there's more. Now, let's talk about the shoes, okay? So here, I want you to look at the slots. Now, here we have slots that go all the way through into where the drive shaft goes. Now, earlier we talked about this one point, the, the clip points down, this one the clip points up. So as far as the shoes are concerned, they're similar, but are they the same diameter? And they, they are this, well, nope, they're off by just a little bit. If I have him abutted, he's off by just a little bit right there. But what I want you to look at is this slot that they cut all the way through to the top, as opposed to this guy where the slot does not get cut all the way through the top, as opposed to this guy. So let's look at these things. Let's just bring him. Here we have one where the slot goes all the way through. Here's one where the slot just stops right there. And here's one where they just put a notch in it. So this, what, three different types of, of um, profiles for shoes. But wait, there's more changes that they've made to these systems. As if that wasn't enough changes that they've made to the design of the Schwintech, this was a style that we've used for years. It has the little circle with the four notches in it. Now they're going with a stop sign 
what is that? Octagon? One, two, three. No, it's only six. Or is it five? Pentagon. One, two, three. Uh, whatever. Okay. Um, and so, but the racks are the same. But now the drive shafts change. So when the drive shaft changes, that means that your collet also needs to change. Um, and um, so there's probably several other things. I don't know how many I've counted, but these parts that I have here, and, and I've got more in these boxes, okay? This is what I carry around in my service trailer because I fix these things all the time. Um, plus I've got the repair kits. Here's a bunch of repair kits here. Um, how many different repair kits would you need to get to fix your system? I've even taken the sticker off of the H column and ordered parts based off of the sticker on the side of the H column. And I got parts that were up, not down, or down, not up. Or they sent me parts that had the, the, uh, the collets weren't right. It's just absolutely madness. So as a service technician in the field, look at all the stuff I have to stock. And then guess what? I may not have the one that you need because the ones that I have a lot of apparently are the ones that they don't have many of them. They, the ones that I'm out of, and there's probably quite a few of these. And I was just showing you what I have in my pile here, but I would expect that there's even more changes and you guys can let me know. So when you go to order your little service repair kit here, you know, yeah, good luck because we've done that. Uh, like I am just lucky on the service call that I'm on today right here involving this shoe that I was able to find some shoes on some of these bearing blocks that were in good shape and transfer it from my stash of parts over to this bearing block. Um, now to do that, we had to take the whole thing apart just to get the little plastic shoe on. Um, so I did want to do a show and tell and show you all of the different ways that Schwintech has, that Lippert specifically, has changed the design of this system. And it really makes it very difficult for us to stock parts for all the different changes. We really do not know what part you're going to need until we actually take it apart. And let's see on this one. Yeah, your, your slot does not go all the way through on here. It stops right there. And it's an up, okay? Um, and it's the width, okay? So that goes back, you know, the, the, shoe, the shoes are also changed based off of width. And then you got this whole problem with the gib sliding in. So it really makes it difficult to try to find which one of these things fits in yours. And uh, good enough doesn't really count. There needs to be a very tight mesh to make this bearing block slide perfectly on that rack. Okay, so that's the end of the show and tell. I need to get back to work. Um, I'm going to go put that back on. And then um, I'm going to get busy with both hands. And um, I'll kind of run the camera as we go. And hopefully that, that water sprayer is done with its job and I can get in there. Okay, so as I'm reassembling, I'll show you some pro tips. The challenge is to get to that screw way up in there. And what I have found over the years is you get a, this is a square bit, okay? Uh, I'm, I need both hands to do it, but you mount that, here, I'll just do it right here. You mount that on that back screw, and then this is just a quarter inch uh, ratcheting wrench, and then you can, mm, trying to do this, yeah, and then you can kind of get it in there. That's my little pro tip to share with you guys. Okay, I've got the new bearing block. Well, I've got this, it's the old bearing block with a new shoe on there and uh, no play at all as opposed to before, which started us all the way up. And what is Darren gonna do, guys? PTFE, Teflon. Uh, I'm just gonna skirt the rack, just like I told you, okay? And um, I'm gonna just work this back and forth. That's nice and slippery. We like it a lot, yay, yay. Okay, so now to do the uh, alignment, I'll just share with you what I'll do. Um, you take a tape measure. Okay, so I've got the motor off on the top. So what that means is I can grab this thing and I could just turn it, okay, at will. I'm gonna lubricate the top one too. So I usually get it somewhere, I don't know, about there. And um, here's my bottom bearing block. I'm gonna put it in there. Now I still need to put the spur gear. Okay, so some of you might have a question when you're putting your spur gear back. If you look at this thing, it's got a little bit of a profile on one side and it's flat on the other. So how do you know which way to do? The, 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 the profile goes down. Okay, so we're gonna put it in there with the profile down. All right, let me zoom out just to focus. So I'm gonna put it 
profile is going to be down. I have talked a little bit on my other videos on those S's. See that S right there, aligning the S's. Uh, so you could do that. But what we're going to do is just uh, kind of get it close. It'll fall in sooner or later. Anyway, I'm going to do this with two hands. But once I get it in there, I'm going to share with you what I did. Okay, but I'll just talk you through it. I'm going to take a tape measure with one hand. I'm going to try to pay it out a little bit here. Okay. So I'm going to go from the flange of the RV. And let's just say, okay, we're right at four inches. Okay. So then I'm going to go to the top and get it at four inches. And I'm going to keep playing with this until the top and the bottom are, guess what? In my instance, four inches, nine inches, seven and three quarter, whatever they need to be. So the top bearing block and the bottom bearing block are aligned. I'm going to do that now. Climbed up on the ladder to get my measurement. And now you've seen how many times this system has been changed. Some of you on the top, you're going to, you're especially the ones that are, I don't know, octagon or whatever. Um, they're going to have like a little C clip in there. These, they will notch that drive shaft. So if I look down at the bottom, it's in its little drive shaft, but I'm going to purposely stick it out. And so there we go. So what that means is it's, it's, it can only go down that far. What it's doing is it's hitting the top of the spur gear. And what it is, is those little dimples that they put in there. That's on purpose. So these things, these drive shafts come out from the top. They do not get driven through going down. Okay. Now, another issue that we'll talk about since we're doing this video here, some of you here, let me put my, uh, is that right? Yeah. Okay. So let me, let me, I'm going to mount this in there. There we go. So some of you, okay. Some of you, your motor is not going to seat. Actually, let me get the motor. Let me, let me create this for you guys. Hold on. Okay. There we go. So we've gotten some questions on our live streams and some questions on comments. And what they're saying is they cannot get the motor down. So that is to say the motor will be about right there and they just can't get this motor to go all the way down. Okay, so let me show you what's going on there. So I'm gonna move the motor out of the way. If they take the motor off, what you'll find is your collet is sticking up a little bit. Okay, so that's preventing the motor from seating all the way down. Now, if we understand how these things work, and let me do that for you guys real quick. Let me just kind of, Eyeball it here. I, I'm, I'm not doing my four inch alignment right now, so I'm looking down below. I'm just trying to. All right, let's. Let me let me set this up for you guys so I can really help serve your questions on how these things work on getting that motor to seat. So what I just did was I made it four inches on top and bottom, and I've fought that spur gear down on the bottom. So now I'm four inches top to bottom. Great, lovely, fantastic. Now where was I? Okay, so our motor is going to be in here, and we're not able to get this motor to seat, okay? Well, there's that little D, shaft, D, D profile on the end of the motor you're, you're trying to fight. And uh, sometimes it's easier just to take these H columns out. If, if all you gotta do is take a whole bunch of screws off and the thing pops out, sometimes it's just a lot easier to do that. I'm serious, guys. It's a lot easier to do that to fight this motor than to have to deal with the little slot they give you on the inside where you're just fighting it. So all I've just done is I've made sure it's even. <laughs> Trust me, I've already moved it. But anyway, it's remember my number was four. So it's four inches on top, four inches at the bottom, and, and we can we can see that. And now um, let's talk about what we were talking about a minute ago. Squirrel, squirrel. So we're our motor seated on nicely. Okay. Now I'm gonna come back to this, but I want to talk about something real quick since we can see everything. So here we have our motor, here we have our wires. Um, and what we do not want to do, here let me move. I'm gonna pur I purposely move that. Okay, so what we would not want to do, so our motor is seated in, down in here, okay? What we don't want to do is orient it in such a way where the wires are facing the business end of the room, okay? What we would rather do is face it so that the wires are facing the back. So sometimes it's a lot easier to work on this. All you have to do is take those screws off along the, the H column. On this unit, there's two brackets on the inside I had to take off. Some of you are gonna have a longer bracket, but as you've seen, there's so many different ways to, there's so many parts and so many things, but anyway, go with it, you'll, you'll figure it out. So sometimes if I'm working on these motors, it's a whole lot easier just to take off like 10 screws and get this whole thing out here where I can get to it than to fight it, literally, inside that little hole with the little slot they give you. It can be done, but if it's a fair weather day, I'm gonna be taking the thing apart and coming out here. So right now the motor's seated in, and I, I, but my wires are facing towards the slide room. So what I wanna do is 
I'm going to leave my motor just in a little bit and I'm going to turn it. So what's happening is, so now I've turned it a quarter and now my wires are there. Let's do one more. There, and now my wires in the back. So I really want my wires in the back protected and because this is the H column that's going to be snapped on and look, my wires are nice and protected. So I, I like that my wires are protected. So that's where we're going to want this. Um, so I wanted to share that with you and then when our, our plug here gets connected, we could just kind of make a little nest of it right on top. Okay. Sometimes you could put some tape on there to hold it in place. And then that screw, the, the motor screw goes in one of these little windows from the outside. So let's go back to what we were talking about. And that is if your motor, if you cannot get it to seat in, we have had some questions of folks that just say, look, I can't get my motor to seat in. Okay, we want it to be like that. So I'm gonna take the motor out of the equation. And if you were to take your motor out, you're gonna notice that your collet is bumped up just a little bit, okay? So what I want you to do is get a, a socket, you know, that size and just bang, 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 knock that back down. So we know that that will work. And if you've lubricated, there's, oh, there's one more place. I want you to lubricate. Um, I want you to lubricate at the base of this motor right here. So remember I said, pull the wiper seal back and get your drive shaft. Well, I want you to pull your wiper seal back and get the base of this motor. And that product will wick itself down in here and work its way inside that collet where that steel collet is rubbing against the aluminum bearing block. But if you bang, 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 down on that collet, it will drive the drive shaft down. So right in here is where those little notches are. You know what I just noticed? Somebody's worked on this before. Because look, that profile is pointing up. How about that? Okay, if you're doing a lot of these like I do, what I would recommend is getting a, a, a motor wire harness. You can get a short one, pick them up, cut the ends off and put little little spade connectors on there kind of thing. And then I use 12 volt tools, so I have a 12 volt battery pack. And uh, then you can drive this at will. Now, I just drove it to here. And if I, I don't know if the camera's gonna pick it up, but I'll take my eyeball and I'll put it right on that flangey profile there. And I'll just make sure that visually, and it is, visually it is like right where the black and the white profile meet. So then I will connect my little wire here. Okay, and we can see that it's moving back. I'm gonna make sure everybody's happy. Sometimes, okay, we're having issues with touching the wrong buttons. So I'm gonna pick up where I'm moving back, make sure, make sure everybody's happy. And um, I have even seen where sometimes these screws, so if you look right in there, they don't give you much room for this screw head and that bearing block, and the bearing block. So sometimes these screws will stick out and that'll be a hard stop. This thing will get caught up on those. So we've seen that several times actually, and a lot of broken off screw heads. So anyway, moving along here. So the next thing I will do, I'm satisfied that the thing's working itself back and forth. Um, the, the issue was the, the shoe down on the bottom. We've got that replaced and, um, we put the H column back on and, um, we'll run it to see if it's, uh, if everybody's happy with this thing and if it's, if he's working happy. Okay. I've been busy. You missed all kinds of steps, but the moment of truth is that it is totally 50% compression top to bottom. Okay. Now, um, I had to synchronize a room. In another video, I'll link to above. I show you how to synchronize, so I had to do that. And basically what you're doing is you're making both motors amp out at the same time. That's really what you're doing. Uh, so therefore the controller sees both motors amp out at the same time. Therefore the controller says, okay, you're synchronized. Um, now, yes, it is sticking out a little bit, but what we're looking for is a 50% compression of the D seal. That's what a closed room is. So even though I can stick my finger in here, the D seal in there is compressed 50%. Now I've got some butyl tape that I'm gonna clean up. You guys do not need to see me clean up the mess. So the whole point of this video was just to share with you what is going on with your slide room if it is out an inch here at the bottom, okay? And it's touching up at the top. Luckily the sprayer has moved on. Actually it's done. So I'm done. If uh, this added value to you, I still have a little bit of work to do here to finish this up. Um, if this added value to you, uh, thumb it up, share it with some friends, subscribe to our channel. We have a whole other group over on Patreon that is uh, pledging us, and we have more videos over on Patreon that are not over here on our YouTube Rumble side. So, hey, this is Darren from Squim, Washington. Um, got another victory on the Swintech. Hopefully it added value to you, and I'll see you on the next video. Thanks for watching. Bye.